Troy with V-Twins to V-8s coming on to do a very short um, video on the removal and the installation of a harmonic balancer on this happens to be a small block Chevy but it's the same for uh, just about any of the small and big block Chevys, Fords, Mopars, what have you. So the removal part is pretty straightforward. Lots of times it will give you a little bit of problem. What you need is a puller like this. I can bring it in so that you can see it. You know it's a three, it's got three slots in it and a bolt that goes through the center. It goes onto, onto your harmonic balancer like this. It's got a nice little button so you don't damage your crankshaft. You put your bolts in and you screw your center in. Bring the camera over so you can get a better look. There's three holes in the balancer where you pull these screws on. We utilize those three holes. We back this screw off here. We put our puller, puller on here to correspond with those. We put our bolts with the kit that go in there. We screw them down and then once we get our all three of our bolts lined up we turn this and as we turn this it walks this piece back and it removes the balancer. Now the reason I'm changing this particular balancer is I have kind of a unique situation is my balancer is loose. I'm doing this engine for a guy, the engine was all assembled, I'm putting it in the car and assembling the car, and I noticed that my harmonic balancer has a little bit of walk to it. So I grabbed the hold of the balancer and boom, it comes right off. I don't have, there should be an interference fit. In other words, this should literally be pressed on here. Um, with this looseness like this, the harmonic balancer is designed to absorb the torsional flux, flux, fluctuations in the crankshaft. In other words, the crankshaft, with all the firings of the cylinders, it creates kind of a torsional vibration, a twisting vibration, if you will. This balancer is steel and then steel with a rubber in the center, and it kind of walks back and forth on a rubber and it absorbs that. The problem is is that mine is loose on the keyway and like I explained to my client if this starts doing this at high RPM it's going to shear this key this is going to come fly, it's going to break the bolt, this is going to come off and it is going to make a disaster. So that's why we're replacing this balancer. Okay so now that we have our balancer off we pry out our seal that's in this front um, timing cover with a seal removal tool. I already did this one and um, then you drive your seal in. Uh, use something cylindrical so you can hit it right on the edge of the seal not to damage your cover, not to damage your seal. Walk it in there nice and evenly. The coating that's on the outside of the seal is a sealant so don't remove that coating just go ahead and put this right on. So now to put this on a lot of guys like to just hit it with a hammer, it's really not the right way to do it. I am going to show you the right way to do it and there are some easy ways that make it a lot better. Um, one of the ways is, is you take your harmonic balancer and you put it in the oven and you heat it to 200 degrees. What this does is it causes the balancer causes the balancer to expand with the heat, you know, expansion contraction. Um, our crankshaft isn't really cold, but it isn't really hot either. Our balancer is going to be 200 degrees, it's going to make it easier for this to go on here. 200 degrees is not so hot it's going to damage our seal or anything because the engine's designed to operate at say 200 to 240. Um, so what I have right now is I've got my balancer in my oven getting warm. I've got my new seal in here and I've got the tool to install the harmonic balancer. Yes, there actually is a tool. This is the tool right here. It's a very simple tool. This end screws into the end of the crankshaft. This has a bearing in it. This goes against the balancer and you turn this nut and it walks the harmonic balancer on. I will bring it in for a close-up when I get the balancer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my oven, I'm going to get my balancer, I'm going to come in, I'm going to slide it onto the crankshaft, then I'm going to show you how to use this tool. Okay, so now I'm back. I got my balancer out of the oven. I got my gloves on so I don't burn myself. And I'm going to slip this on here. And now I have it on here, but it's, it's tight. So now I'm going to use my tool and I'm going to show you how this works. First thing you got to do is you got to make sure that your bolt is all the way in your crankshaft. So in other words, you want it 
to be threaded all the way into the crankshaft and then that way there you won't cause any damage. Basically you can see the center bolt I'm going to hold steady and then I'm going to turn this nut and as I turn this nut it, you can see the harmonic balancer going onto the crankshaft. And you just continue to turn this until you get this all the way on here. And you might say to yourself, Jesus, that seems really tight, but it's got to be on here tight. It's not designed to just slide on like you're putting a tire on a car. This piece is got to be on here tight. How do you know when you're far enough on? Basically what it does is it just stops because the inside of this balancer, the, the end of it, is going to contact the drive gear that's on the crankshaft that drives your timing chain. It's going on, I mean it's going on nice and slowly and it's not getting caught. You know, it's one of those things where you just kind of take your time and just Keep going when it's when it's done you'll you'll feel it it'll just stop so I'm gonna there it is okay so now it's buried right up against there I can just back off my nut once my nuts backed off then I can take my bolt loose and my balancers on okay folks so now my balancer is all on so the only thing I have to worry about now is putting my pulley on and my center crankshaft bolt make sure you torque it to spec and, um, and then that's all there is to it. The tool that I use to put this on, they're relatively inexpensive and worth every penny. Especially, I mean, I'm wide open here, I can do whatever I want, but if you're leaning over the radiator support in a car, um, you've got no room to actually hit the end of this, even if you wanted to. I don't recommend whacking it. They tell you you can put a block of wood there. You can, I've done it in the past in a pinch, but this is just a much nicer way. It slides right on there nice and easy. You don't have to worry about anything. You saw it, it went on there like butter and it didn't just fall on. It slid on there nice and easy. So that's, um, that's it in a nutshell. I appreciate you tuning in. My name's Troy Kane. The website is vtwins to v8s.com. You can get me on vtwins to v8s.com on Facebook at my website and also on my YouTube channel which is Troy Kane. I have a lot of um, instructional videos on painting, engine work, auto restoration, that's my thing. Um, feel free to contact me if you're doing a project, I'd be more than happy to help you. And thanks again.